The first step is to go to Benchling.com, and Benchling is like Google Docs, but for DNA. And this is what it should look like. So, pull up Google Docs. If you guys have made an account and are here, then please raise your hand. <laughs> wow, you guys are so prepared. Okay. Okay. So. Let me speak louder. Okay. Um, so good. We are done. Step one. Step two is to. So the the objective of this is to make a plasmid for COVID nineteen. So we need to import some some DNA. Um, so click on this plus sign in the the left hand corner, and then go to DNA sequence, and then go to new DNA sequence. Should look like this, and then we we don't wanna, we don't want to input a raw sequence because um, it's just not as helpful as if we import a pre annotated sequence. So click on the search external databases one over there. Um, yes, hope we're good. Okay, so now that's set up. So now we need an empty plasmid backbone. Um, so an empty plasmid backbone doesn't really do anything. So if you put this DNA into like a human or into a reactor, it's not going to do anything. Um, but it's just like, it's like a blank doc on Google Docs. And then if we put genes in it, that's when it starts to do something. So we have this. All you have to do is copy the link and then uh, import it into French Lang right here. And for search. And for search. All right, wait. Yeah, it should look something like this, but we want it to be like in a circular form because that's how plasmas normally look. Yay. Okay. Are we all good? What's the The link, it's 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 in your it's in the notion doc. It's this one. Okay. Are we, are we all good? <laughs> okay. Cool. So now we should have an empty plasmid backbone and bench link. And you can see that there are a lot of these like triangular arrows. Um, you don't have to worry about most of them. They're just like labels for like, let's say that this part of the DNA is like this label. Um, the important things you need to know are the ORI. So does anyone know what an ORI or ORI is? We learned about it yesterday. <laughs> well, that is the origin of replication. So if you put the plasmid into a organism, then it'll find this to replicate the entire plasmid. So then you enter like a little bit and then it grows into a lot of plasmids. Um, another thing is AMPR, which is ampicillin. Anyone know what ampicillin is? <laughs> what is it? Antibiotic. Yeah, it's antibiotic. It's like antibiotic resistance. So um, when we make a recombinant plasmid, we're not completely sure whether or not like the gene we put into the plasmid will actually go into the plasmid. So what we do is we give, we, we insert an antibiotic resistance gene. So then the plasmid that don't have this gene, which like are, are not edited properly, they die if we put it in antibodies. Yeah, so that is the basic anatomy of the plasmid you see here. Okay, so step two, or step, the next step is, uh, now we actually need to insert the gene that we care about, the, the insert gene. So does anyone know in the mRNA vaccines, what is the gene that is expressed? Because we can't put the entire genome of the virus in there because you're gonna die, right? It's gonna kill you. It is the what? The spike protein. It is the spike protein. Cool. So now we go to, we need to find the spike protein gene and put it in the plasmid. So go to this website, which is on the Notion. Um, and this is from the National Center of Biotechnology Information. And this is a very reputable source to find information on COVID-19. Um, yeah. So if you scroll, yeah, this is like the amino acid sequence. Here is like the... Uh, this is like the actual DNA sequence. 
but if we want it to be yeah it's really cool if we want it to be annotated all we need to do is find the accession sequence so what i highlighted over there because that's like the unique identifier and you copy it and then we do the same thing in benchling we just plus sign dna sequence new dna sequence search external databases and then you copy it in here and press search and then you import yeah and now we have this <laughs> Are we all good? Okay, it looks like we're good. All right, so down here, I will I will close this first. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. How do I make this? How do I make this full screen? Uh, okay. Um, not completely here, but but on your own computers, you can look through these um, annotations and try to find if you guys can find which one's the spike protein. Like this one is like RFI protein. This one is uh, what is this? What is this protein? These are. There's a bunch of proteins, but see if you guys can find the spike protein. Um, it should say something. It should be called like, I think it's called uh, like S gene or something. S gene. If anyone finds it, um, just raise your hand and oh wait yes what is the what is the like the the location the nucleotide location <laughs> is it just is it just here yeah <laughs> yeah okay so I hope you like copy that yes that is exactly what we do so what we need to do is we we find the gene it's called S gene as highlighted, and then you right click on it and you press copy. And then we we want the, the DNA sequence, uh, which is highlighted here. So we just click on that. So now it's copied to your clipboard. So now that we have the DNA sequence for the spike protein, where do we want to put it? The yeah, we want to put it into the plasmid. Okay. So, um, so to put something in the plasmid, we want to find the multiple cloning site. Um, and where that is, is, so these random names on the side are all restriction enzymes. And what they are, they're kind of like DNA ninjas. They cut the plasmid, and then you insert the gene, and then they seal it again with DNA ligase, right? So multiple cloning site is where there's a bunch of these restriction sites. And then um, it's very easy to make edits there. So I think a good place is probably, um, I don't know, wait. Okay. I mean, here it looks like one. Last time, last time I like edited this, I just used this, this part, this, this, this part, because there's a lot of restriction enzymes. I just use EcoRV because, um, we like being eco-friendly and we like RVs. So let's just use this one. Yeah. Um, so once we have, once we have like a multiple cloning site with a bunch of restriction sites, we go to the little, the little scissor arrow at the right side. And then we have to check, check how many cut sites it has. So if we type in like eco RV, we see that it only has one cut site, which means that the enzyme will look all around the plasmid and only find one area to cut. If if it wasn't, if it had like two or like if it had like 267 cut sites, then 
your plasmid would just disintegrate. It would not, it would not work. So we want something with only one cut site. That's very important. Um, so since PCORV has one cut site, it is perfect. And what we do is we select the we select we select the DNA that is part of this cut site. And then what we do is we delete it and then we replace it with the DNA we previously copied, which is the spike protein, and then enter. Whoa. Yeah. That's kind of like we cut it and then we insert the, the G. If there's any questions, feel free to ask. It can be kind of confusing. As we should, all right. Are we good? Yeah, there's more. Okay. So now, now that we have this DNA inserted, we don't want to forget about it because it's because you know we can't really DNA is kind of hard to read. It's just like four letters. So what we can do is we can annotate it to make sure we don't forget, and then we can just um, right click it and click create annotation. And then we want to name it like COVID-19 spike protein. Okay. Okay. Color. Let's pick pink. And then just click save annotation. So now we've labeled this area. Wait. We've, oh my God. <laughs> we've labeled this area as the COVID-19 spike protein. Yep. So, are we done yet? Do we think that we are done now? No. No? <laughs> what are we missing? A bunch of stuff. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> um, let's see, where am I? Yeah, so, we still, for a gene to be expressed, we need four things. And they start with P, T, S, and S. Anyone want to guess what they are? Yes. Stop That's one of them. Stop we need a start yeah. and stop codon. We need a start and stop codon for translation. Yeah. Um, what are the other two things? Features. Uh, features. No. So that's for trans start and stop codons for translation. What about transcription? What do we need to start transcription? Because we have to copy the DNA and then express it. Potato. Are we done already? Oh, what? Okay, anyway. Yeah, but okay, that, that, okay. We're almost done. For PNT, it's promoter and terminator to start transcription and stop transcription. So, um, to find the promoter, we go to Benchling and then we, find, we look for something that says promoter. It's, it's, it's one, one of the. The which promoter? Uh, there's a one AC promoter. One AC. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I think we can probably use this one. TF, TF1 promoter. It looks pretty nice. So, yeah, that's the terminator. CYC1 is the terminator we're going to use. So we take this promoter and then we right click it and then we press copy, copy the DNA sequence. And then right before the COVID 19 sequence starts, we just put it here. So right here, we just copy it in. Or paste it in. The TF1 promoter is already promoter itself. Yeah, so we don't really need to do it, but. And the, the promoter and terminator are placed perfectly. Oh, what? The C1C1 terminator <laughs> is at the end of the gene. Wait, that's true, huh? Wait, that's kind of perfect. But but normally, normally if we select a random like um, restriction site that's like on the other side, it's not going to be there. So I'll just do it just in case. But yeah, so now we see this is the DNA sequence, and then right here is the promoter. So your DNA polymerase will like find this and then uh, transcribe that sequence. And then we do the same thing with the um, terminator at the end of it. So we find 
the C CYC1 terminator. And then we copy the sequence. One second. Copy the wrong thing. Yeah, we're almost done. <laughs> okay. And then and then we put it right after uh, this is done. Yeah. I'll just go super quickly through the last two steps. But essentially, at the start, um, right after the promoter and before the spike protein sequence begins, we have to add the start codon, which is literally AUG. So we just type in AUG. Uh, why is it not working? Okay, we'll just do ATG. It'll, it'll automatically convert to ATG. But yeah. And then at the end, we just add the stop codon, which is um, U or T A A. Uh, where's the end of this? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Here. Yeah. And that is it. And now we have successfully created a COVID 19 vaccine plasma. Woo! Thank you, everybody.